This week on Culture Q, a trans skateboarder forging a path for so many others. Celebs remember actress Anne Heche. And transgender folks have a kiki with the Pope. What is going on? It is Anna Lawani here. And I'm Cheryl Lazar. This is Culture Q. And here are some of the highlights from this week in queer culture. Whether you're a fan of Anne Hesch from the soap opera Another World where she played two characters, or you loved her in star-making roles in Donnie Brasco and Six Days, Seven Nights, the sudden loss of the actress has saddened many of us. Last Friday, Anne Hesch passed away from brain injuries caused by a car crash in the suburban neighborhood outside of Los Angeles. She was considered brain dead when she arrived at the hospital, but was kept alive while they searched for recipients for her organs. Hesch's son, Homer LaFoon, made a statement on behalf of him and his brother, Atlas Tupper, saying, my brother Atlas and I lost our mom. After six days of almost unbelievable emotional swings, I am left with a deep, wordless sadness. Hopefully my mom is free from pain and beginning to explore what I like to imagine as her eternal freedom. Hesh gained notoriety in the 90s, but her own mental health issues seemed to come up in the 2000s. An incident where she was found confused and disoriented in a rural area near Fresno, California, inspired a memoir from the star called Call Me Crazy. The celebrity Twitterverse even reacted to the loss with their condolences. Novelist Zoe Whittle said, she was the first out femme in Hollywood when she was with Ellen and mocked for years when she had a public nervous breakdown. It's definitely a reminder that Hesh was one of the first openly queer faces in a queer relationship that many had ever seen. Her 1997 relationship with comedian Ellen DeGeneres was huge for queer representation at the time. DeGeneres also tweeted her condolences for the actress saying, this is a sad day. I'm sending Anne's children, family, and friends all my love. These sentiments were shared by other actors, including Lonnie Love, Rosanna Arquette, and Antonio Banderas. Writer and director Ted Gagan also shared what Hesh's and DeGeneres' relationship meant to him. I was in awe and remember thinking, this could really change things for people. Thank you for bravely taking that step, Anne. Rest in peace. Now, last week we talked about the number of queer femme shows that were being canceled. Well, good news is now on the horizon with some exciting queer casting news. First up is Black Monday star Andrew Rannells, who was just cast in the upcoming Our Son. Already starring Billy Porter and Luke Evans, the film centers around a couple vying for custody of their eight-year-old son. Next, we have actress Hari Neff, who will play trans legend Candy Darling. The Warhol Muse will be featured in an untitled biopic written by transparent writer Stephanie Kornick. It was always Neff's dream to play Candy and the part they were born to play. Neff says that Candy bridged the gap between her dreams and a reality stacked so consummately against her. She burned fast and bright. Neff goes on to say that Candy Darling taught girls like her how to dream. She's the blueprint. Next is the iconic Lauren Ambrose, who will join the second season of Yellow Jackets as a grown-up version of Van, a.k.a. Vanessa Palmer. The younger version of the character is played by queer actress Liv Hewson. I mean, Yellow Jackets definitely keeps delivering our 90s and early 2000s faves, and this casting is no exception. Next, while many of you already know about Jonathan Bailey and Matt Bomer being cast as a couple in Showtime's Fellow Travelers, you may have missed the casting of Noah J. Ricketts as Frankie Hines. The show is a love story and political thriller, and Ricketts will be playing a drag performer who works at Bomer's favorite underground bar. And that's not all. Stick around for our Reverie streaming guide to see more amazing queer content. Yes, of course, we love that. But what do banned books, Idaho, and the Pope have in common? Well, they're all things that made our LGBTQ news you need to know this week. In New Jersey, high school librarian Martha Hickson has vocally opposed the removal of LGBTQ books from school libraries, despite facing backlash and harassment for her views. Hickson was recently awarded the Lemony Snicket Prize by the American Library Association. The prize is for noble librarians faced with adversity. I am by no means the only librarian uh, to have uh, experienced challenges, to have experienced personal attacks to uh, reputation and integrity, um, and to have fought for the uh, right to read. There are hundreds of librarians going through this around the country, and I was very happy to accept that award uh, on their behalf. Martha works at North Hunterton Voorhees Regional High and has fought to keep LGBTQ books intact throughout the district. There's been a clear effort to remove books on LGBTQ persons, critical race theory, and Black Lives Matter. And these attacks have unfortunately left Hickson experiencing sleeplessness, weight loss, and anxiety. 
but that hasn't stopped her from continuing her mission. She shared, today's kids deserve to see their real lives and their real experiences portrayed in the books that they read. While our brave librarians continue their fight here, members of the trans community have opened up lines of communication with the Vatican. Kinda. We recently learned that since April, Pope Francis has met with trans community members at the Vatican four times. He has yet to make any universal positive statements about trans people, but he has been open to meeting. This time he met with a group of unhoused trans folks who have been sheltered inside the blessed Immaculate Virgin Church outside of Rome. The church opened its doors to trans folks during the height of the pandemic, and the Pope arranged for them to receive COVID vaccines at the Vatican. One of the sisters at the church, Sister Genevieve Jenningro said, no one should encounter injustice or be thrown away. Everyone has the dignity of being a child of God. Though this news is hopeful, Pope Francis has been notably neutral on LGBTQ rights, blessing gay unions, while simultaneously standing firm that marriage should be between a man and a woman. He also told trans youth to, quote, accept their own body as it was created. However, earlier this year, Pope Francis also sent a handwritten letter to a Jesuit-led group of LGBTQ Catholics called Outreach, saying, God is father and he does not disown any of his children. And now we head all the way down to Idaho, where plaintiffs sued the state over a 2020 anti-transgender law that had already been ruled unconstitutional, and they won. In 2018, Judge Candy Dale ruled that it was unconstitutional for state agencies to block trans people from correcting the gender marker on their birth certificates. The original ruling was the result of a complaint by a trans woman who was harassed and called slurs at the Social Security office while trying to make a change. In 2020, Republican State Rep Julianne Young introduced a bill to ban changes with very narrow parameters for exception. Of course, being transgender failed to make the list. Idaho Governor Brad Little signed the bill into law. Its proponents led with transphobic fears that trans women are somehow a threat to cis women and cited something having to do with crime statistics. Lambda legal attorney Nora Huppert shared in a statement, quote, it's astonishing that Idaho legislature of Governor Little plowed forward with this dangerous and archaic ban. She went on to say, quote, when you treat the federal court like a doormat, there are going to be consequences. And that's all the LGBTQ news you need to know today. Okay, let's lighten things up. Last week, we featured the film Mother's Little Helpers in our Reverie Streaming Guide. The movie follows millennial children who have to go back home to take care of their 70s burnout mom. She said that she's dying. Oh, God. You do not. You have three siblings. And you believe that? <laughs> you know that's right. And I got a chance to talk to one of the stars, writer, director, Kestrin Pantera, about the movie and what she has up her sleeve next. So tell us more about Mother's Little Helpers. We're actually playing it right here on Reverie, which is so great. You know, we're thrilled to have Mother's Little Helpers on Reverie. The film was actually loosely based on some real lies that were told in my family. We kind of lived the experience of having a flawed parent come out with some real zingers at the end of life and then be faced to reconcile them. Wow. And so then how do you take that experience and craft it into something that is for the big screen? You know, it was a super collaborative experience. So the lead actress, Milana Weintraub, who you know, and our star, Sam Littlefield, who is just a He's just a poet. He's a poem of a person. And Brita Wool, we were all going through the same experience of a deep loss of a parent and family member at the same time. And everyone just felt like talking about it. We're like, let's make a comedy about loss. In just as much, it was kind of like us dealing with our own stuff, but it's a universally relatable story, right? It's, it's a rite of passage that if you're lucky, you get to go through the loss of a parent, you know? I mean, was it therapeutic since this was such a personal story to, you know, put it out there and then, you know, you're all going through this. I'm sure there was a lot of emotion also on set, even though you had done a lot of rehearsals and gone through the script multiple times. It was super intense. There was one scene when Brita calls 911 and like a producer started crying because every, every, everyone was brought to the project as a means of processing something that they had to do on their own terms. And I hope that we all are released in some way by letting it go. I feel I feel good about it. Let's talk about the amazing performers in this. Um, their names, the characters they're playing. 
Okay, so Sam Littlefield is the hero. <laughs> he's my personal hero. And he is also the main, he's the guy with the real love interest in this story where he falls in love with his parole officer and they have this beautiful love story. But he's also spending a lot of time on Grindr and having just a lot of inspired botched sexual experiences. I love that botched sexual experiences on Grindr. I think a lot of people can relate. Of course, Milana, otherwise known as the AT&T girl, but she's much more talented than just that. She directs a lot of those commercials too, for the record. What? She's a total boss and she's a fabulous, I mean, it was a great honor to have Milana Weintraub play my sister in Mother's Little Helper. She's so talented, she's so smart and funny, and then she can cry on a dime and then punch you in the gut with a, with a tear, you know, she's amazing. I want to talk about the intersections of the LGBTQ space in this movie. Like, why would it be on Reverie? Why should the queer community care about this movie? There's a really beautiful love story that happens in this film between Sam Littlefield and Louise Sosa that I think the Reverie community will really enjoy. There's also a lot of, you know, exploring your sexuality and trying to figure out you know, taking taking some wrong turns on the way to finding the right turn. And there, there are two people who find love, but it's not like about your journey being queer. It's just your journey. So why should people watch this movie? What do you hope that audiences get from it? What I hope that people get watching Mother's Little Helpers is a sense of joy in letting go and processing and saying goodbye to a flawed parent. That if you have one, you're okay. Our time on this earth is very, very short. Mm. And the most we can make of it and fill it with joy with the people that we can love, despite how flawed they are, the better off we're gonna be. So show up and do the right thing, especially with someone who may have done you wrong. Honestly, Kestrin is so inspiring. It was so much fun talking to her. And you can watch Mother's Little Helper streaming right now, of course, on Reverie. And we've got more streaming right here. This week we celebrate World Humanitarian Day. We've got the perfect titles just for you, along with some other great selections. Our first selection is Moving Stories, which follows six diverse dancers from the acclaimed Battery Dance Company, who travel the world to work with at-risk youth. These kids are from India, Romania, Korea, and Iraq, who are involved in the Dancing to Connect program. They've experienced war, poverty, sexual exploitation, and trauma as refugees. Dancing to Connect provides an outlet for these children to express themselves in a healthy and safe way. Connect with each other, not just two separate, be one together. So the goal is very clear for all of us, building bridges. You bring the world closer together. Next, there's Woman and Sometimes Men. Sarah is having a tough time. She's engaged to her boyfriend, August, but decides to call it off after only one day. That's when she remembers a short relationship she had with a woman in college and wants to find that feeling again without giving up men. Woman and Sometimes Men follows Sarah's bittersweet journey filled with laughter, tears, women, and of course, sometimes men. Last but not least, we have The Feels. Andy and Lou are excited to celebrate their upcoming wedding with a joint bachelorette weekend in wine country. On the first night, things go awry when one of the brides admits she's never had an orgasm. With Constance Wu from Crazy Rich Asians and Angela Trimber, get ready for a crazy and wild ride. And those are some of the great movies to check out streaming right here, right now on Reverie. Did you know that the 2021 Tokyo Summer Olympics were the first to feature skateboarding? Well, this change brought a lot of attention and exposure to talented but overlooked athletes. While the inclusion was exciting, one hopeful skateboarder, Leo Baker, made news when they declined to participate in the Games as a member of the U.S. Olympic team. The decision led them on a journey around their own identity chronicled in a new Netflix documentary titled Stay On Board, The Leo Baker Story. Back in early 2020, Baker decided to quit the Olympic team. It was a shock to many since Baker had won countless competitions and trained hard to qualify for the Tokyo Summer Games. While they were honored, the decision came down to the fact that Baker had qualified for the women's team. 
Baker himself is transmasculine and goes by he, him, and they, them pronouns. Misgendering and misperceptions were taking a toll on his mental health. So at the age of 28, Baker decided to take a step back. After quitting the team, Baker began to transition and live life on his own terms. He has to choose between being his authentic self and his career that he's worked so hard for. Everyone's like, it's the Olympics. It's just one year. If I wait one more year, there might not be any more Leo. The skateboard star has received lots of support for the documentary, which won the coveted Outfest Audience Award. There are interviews from his friends and loved ones, but also from celebs like skating legend Tony Hawk. Baker says the documentary brought him much needed closure saying, I'm also super grateful to be able to share this part of my life because it will be helpful for a lot of people to witness the trans experience, one version of it anyway. Baker has also been using his platform to encourage more inclusivity in the sport. He's been featured in Tony Hawk's iconic Pro Skate 1 and 2 video games, started a Nike campaign, and helped to launch the queer skateboard company, Glue. I can't wait to watch this. I've been hearing amazing things. And we have to let them know about another favorite before we go that they need to check out. RuPaul's Secret Celebrity Drag Race is airing now with nine celebrities from different walks of life, leaving the fame, but keeping the glitz and glam as they embrace the miracle of drag. Be sure to tune in on VH1, Fuse, or even Hulu. Yes, and they bring in some drag race to close us off. Love it. And with that, I'm Shira Lazar. And it's Anne Lawani signing out. Yes, thanks again for hanging out with us this week on Culture Q. Be sure to join us every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. I have a noise on demand right here on Reverie.